A few weeks ago, I posted a tweet that said, I quit recon. And honestly, it was probably one of the best things that I've done in a long time as a bug bounty hunter and a hacker. And I'll explain to you why throughout this video. But before we jump into the video, do me a favor. If you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button, turn on the ring notification so you get notified every time I post a new video and like the video and let me know if you are someone who enjoys doing recon or not. And I'm going to walk you through the entire concept. So the whole thing was I wanted to challenge myself to not do recon for 30 days and see how it goes. And honestly, in short, I made probably a lot more money than I usually would. And I'll disclose all of that in just a little bit as we talk through this video. But the whole concept was one, I wanted to get back into hacking and automation and recon had taken over my entire life. And two, I again, like I said earlier, I wanted to challenge myself. So the whole thing started with me just thinking, what do I do to go back to how I used to be as a hacker three, four years ago when I was actively looking for bugs? So I went down a rabbit hole and pulled up some of my slides, looked at my talks, and it turns out that most of these talks, the premise was that I was owning these organizations by finding these fun applications within their infrastructure or even their core applications and just purely finding vulnerabilities within them. So for example, if you go back to my uh, how to SSRF talk at DEF CON, how to own the cloud, all those vulnerabilities that I found were not really through recon. I found those different endpoints by just going through the application and just browsing it, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, and just finding more vulnerabilities. And if you look at my recon talk, it was called, uh, it's the little things, I think is what it was called. In that one, it's the same thing. The concept was looking for recon, looking for assets, but at the core of it, most of those vulnerabilities were just discovered through the main application and it was always connected back. And to be honest, I'm sitting here making you guys videos and I kept telling you to go find assets but within those assets when you do your recon find an application that has a sign up page sign up for it log in and test it so it was time for me to take my own advice and it turns out it worked in my favor and within that month within the first week of that month i turned up to take ten thousand dollars in bounties which was the most i have done in a long time and then second it helped me go back and understand what i'm more passionate about and it makes me feel better about the advice that I give you while you're watching these videos. So my advice is always going to be, if you're going to go do recon, like I talked about in my previous videos of what to do after recon is, find applications. If you like doing recon, do that. Find assets that are in scope, within subdomains. Find the ones that have some sort of a login or a sign up page. Sign up for that service and look for vulnerabilities. So that is the whole premise of this video is to walk you through how I did it and how I made 10K with these bounties. And obviously I can't disclose those vulnerabilities. Some of them are still being fixed, but I'm going to give you a quick demo of how I approach these different applications and what is an approach that you can take that's similar to mine using the Airbnb website. But let me make it clear. These vulnerabilities were not found in Airbnb. Airbnb was not involved. I am just using Airbnb purely because of the application and the different roles they have within the application to show you guys how to look for these vulnerabilities. And the reason why I'm using Airbnb is I also went through my leaderboard and I realized the number one program that I was doing really, really well at was Airbnb. And guess what? Most of those vulnerabilities, 99% of them were just me looking at the core application, understanding it and breaking it apart. So let's jump into it. In this video in the, on the screen right now, as you can see that I have a, an account that I've created for testing purposes. And within this account, what I'm doing is I've actually created a listing. So if you're not familiar with Airbnb, Airbnb has two main user roles. One is the host, which is the one that you're looking at. And the other one is the guest, where the guest is able to reserve the listings created by that host. Just understanding these two different user roles gives us an advantage and understanding on the two different things that we can test and also how they interact with one another. But just looking at the host right here, as you can see, I have a listing with this ID address. As you can see, I have this listing with this ID right here, 1356517. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit refresh on my network tab. It's gonna do a refresh of the page. It's gonna show us all these different calls that are being made. I'm gonna do a search within them by pushing Command or Control F. And then looking for that ID. And you can see that 
by typing in that ID address or the ID integer in the search box, it shows us everywhere that this particular listing is being referenced. So you can see there is a manage listing infos that that's being passed to that shows us this is how the Airbnb API works. So in other words, it shows us that Airbnb goes through an API, which is on the www subdomain or the main site with an API version and then the API routes. And then some of these calls are going to be in the format of an endpoint, the object number or whatever the ID for it is, the integer number, and then some calls. So in this case, it's manage listing infos. And then there is the ID, which says, hey, I should test for an IDOR and see if I change the integers for these. Is it going to give me information for another listing? And obviously, if you're testing out for this, it's a lot easier if you make two hosting accounts with two different listings and test against each other when you have the ID. So it just makes it easier and you're not going after user data. But that is the way I would personally do it. I would make two accounts, two listings, and take my target account's listing number and see if I can retrieve data from this main other listing account. And the other thing you can do is here, you can scroll down, you can see the different path of host listing, the IP address or the ID. Um, I keep saying IP, unfortunately, but the ID that I have right here, the 135, is being passed for policy. And you can see all these different ones. There's listing policies. And you can just keep chasing that within different pages. So if I go to the listing details and I refresh and I search for the same thing, we may see similar data or we may see other things like details. We can see that it's making a call to listing details and so on. You can see down here there is a me endpoint with my listing ID. What happens if I change that parameter ID, listing ID to something else? So that kind of gives you an idea and you can just take that information, whether it's the ID and look for API V2 and see what other API endpoints are being called while you page, while you load the page. So for example, if I click right here, it's a random JavaScript file and I look within this for API V2, I can see that there's a default get experience user. It looks for an ID and it looks for the format for host entry in order to give us some data. I can repeat this process for users. I can see there's users me and I can just keep going and going and find more of them. And if I find an endpoint that's interesting to me, what I can do is I can copy that and see if it is reference in other areas of the site. For example, this one isn't. Hopefully we can find another one within this video. But what you can do is you can copy that particular endpoint that you find valuable and see if it's being referenced in other areas of the site and keep going through with it. So let's do one more time here and see if anything else comes up. I can see there is a batch. Let's see, API language, uh, luxury services. And you can also query these on your own. So this one right here, it says API luxury rooms listing IDs so I can query for a luxury listing for example and see if it gives me information and find more IDORs and issues. So that's just one way of just looking at a simple vulnerability type but just looking at JavaScript and cross-referencing these different endpoints that you find or even the different parameters you find and see where it's being passed. So for the example of this one, I found my listing number, I looked for it, I see that it's being passed to a listing ID, I take the listing ID, I copy it, we're gonna do it one more time, I'm gonna copy this listing ID parameter and see that it's being referenced in a bunch of different pieces of code right here. There is this reminder, there's all these other different JavaScript files and so on. So that's one approach. The other thing you can do is, in some cases, you may also see these APIs talk to other APIs. Sometimes you may see hard-coded credentials like an API key or a secret token. You may see some other domain that's supposed to be a backend that you may have access to. For example, in one of my pen tests that I was doing recently, something that I came across was they were using a app.js as their main place to just do all these ajax calls and when i opened it up i just simply look for slash admin and within slash admin i found api calls that were meant for the admins that just allowed me with my session as a non-admin user to load those and if i would have just you know loaded those api endpoints with an on auth user then it wouldn't have worked but they were just simply checking to see if there's a session in place and if the session was in place it was spitting out information that belonged to the admins and I was just able to find those within the JavaScript files because I was paying attention. I was using my network tab and I was just looking for these different endpoints and just reading the code and just looking for more keywords as I was just testing the application. So you don't have to do the network tab. You don't have to do this manually. 
I enjoy doing it manually. And so using the network tab, you can use Burp Suite. You can go to your, uh, I think it's under proxy. You can go to history and see what things are being loaded in the background. And then you can look at the JavaScript files. You can use tools like JS parsers on my uh, GitHub repo, or I think link finder is another one. You can pass these JavaScript files and it will just strip out all the different endpoints. But the whole purpose is just completely forget about Nucle, forget about using all these different port scanning, the different templates, and just really go back to the core of it and just first learn how to approach these different applications before you go and do recon. Okay, I think this is a good place for us to stop. Let me know if you want me to make more content about this. Again, this was just a short version of me trying to just walk you through my process of just looking at this application, how it just changed my outlook and just my view on bug bounties again. And it really made me enjoy the whole process more and more just because I just realized that's what I like to do. I can still do recon. I can still, you know, wait for automated tools to give me things. But at the core of it, this is a lot more fun for me to do. And I enjoy doing it more. And just within that, you know, few days of work, I got $10,000 in bounties, which just blows my mind to just see that happen. Okay, that's it. If you haven't already, drop me a comment and let me know what you think. Do you want me to make a part two to this? If you do, let's start a part two chain in the comments. Last but not least, if you haven't done this already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, become a new homie. And if you want to support the channel, I've turned on memberships where you can get exclusive access and just in general support the channel and help me maintain this channel as a whole. Okay, that's it. I will see you all in the next video. Peace.